वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्य कोटि सम प्रभ निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देव सर्व कार्यु सर्वदा गणनाथ सरस्वती रवि शुक्र गणनाथ सरस्वती रवि शुक्र बृहस्वती परमेशा सरे नित्यम वेदवाणी प्रवर्त सर्वंगलमांगल्ये शिवे सर्वाथ साधिके शरण्ये त्रंबके गौरी नारायणी नमोस्तुते गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्मय श्री गुरवे नम गुड मॉर्निंग लेडीज एंड जेंटमन टुडे इज वेबिनार टाइटल्ड डायबिटिक फुट डोंट वरी इज ऑर्गनाइज बाय ऑल इंडिया सारस्वत कल्चरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन एसोसिएशन विथ द रोटरी क्लब ऑफ बॉम्बे सी कोस्ट अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू ऑल मेंबर्स फ्रेंड्स एंड वेल विशर्स ऑफ आई एस को एंड द रोटरी क्लब ऑफ बॉम्बे सी कोस्ट I am sure we all are know, know about and are aware about diabetes. The incidence of diabetes in India is huge due to various reasons. We all know that it's a problem with the sugar in the blood which needs to be controlled. However, how much of us know about diabetic foot which is one of the major complications of diabetes? Today we have Dr Tushar Rege with us a diabetic foot surgeon who is here to spread awareness about diabetic foot and how to take care or stay away from this complication Dr Tushar Rege has done his MS in general surgery from Grand Medical College Mumbai he has trained medical graduates for 10 years from JG Hospital and Yerala Medical College he's been awarded he's one of the first to have been awarded fellowship in diabetic foot surgery by muhs dr tushar is a practicing surgeon and has put in 30 years of private practice seeing the increasing number of diabetics as well as the complication in diabetics especially the foot he felt the need to start a specialty center diabetic foot clinic dealing exclusively with foot problems the mission was to focus on the affected foot and try and prevent an amputation wherever possible by a systematic and scientific approach to the problem through the fc he has been instrumental in organizing free diagnostic camps and awareness programs with various social organizations like rotary he has done programs for mumbai police he has done programs at raj bhavan through other social organizations and he has also conducted free camps for in rural maharashtra i must mention here that the concern for humanity is not only reflected in his work but also in his daughter manasi's work dr manasi is one of the corona warriors and was deputed to international airport to exam examine the overseas passengers with our, uh, who arrived in mumbai and if necessary isolating or quarantining them her work was acknowledged in the newspapers also dr tushar rege is currently running a diabetic food centers at lilavati sususha okhat and uh, uh, raheja fortis hospital today's webinar our kishore masurkar vice president of isco and president of rotary club of bombay sea coast will have a dialogue with dr tushar rege <clears throat> now may i request kishore to take over thank you very much kishore yeah good morning everyone i welcome you all for this webinar diabetic foot don't worry by an eminent surgeon dr tushar rege dr namaskar Yeah, Doctor Namaskar. I think you have to. Namaskar. Doctor, we all know in India we have more than eight crore known diabetic patients, and they are increasing. We are number two in the world as far as diabetic population is concerned. Uh, Doctor, will you please tell us what is diabetes and how it affects the other parts of the body, including foot? That is. नमस्कार 
at the outset i'm extremely thankful to wisco and the rotaries and all the associated organizations for giving me this opportunity uh, why i'm saying giving me this opportunity is because uh, we are faced with a huge problem huge problem of diabetes and diabetic foot and then the most important thing in this element is reaching out to people the more the opportunities like this where we can reach out to people we are actually going to save people save seed and therefore it is extremely important that uh, you know there is such a platform which has a wide outreach and therefore i am thankful to you i also must say that my uncle whom i fondly fondly call vinay kaka has been instrumental in getting me on this forum as a result of which i could reach out to people now coming to your question i'll i'll first touch as to what diabetes is we all know and every common person knows that an increase in blood sugar is diabetes a person goes to the laboratory gets a sugar tested if it is above that normal limit we say it is diabetes now this sugar circulates everywhere in the body and therefore while it circulates everywhere in the body it starts affecting everywhere from the head to the eyes to the heart to the liver to the kidneys and the feet people are aware of uh, you know a person who has got diabetes probably is going to have some retinopathy that means some problem with the eyes or a person knows he is more prone to heart attacks but what many people are still unaware is that it affects the foot because the foot unfortunately is the most ignored part of the body we are hardly looking at the foot you know we spend so much money time energy keeping the face beautiful but we have seen so many people with handsome faces and beautiful faces having very dirty ugly deformed or infected feet that is because the foot is a an ignored part of the body but believe me over the next few minutes with kishore sir we are really going to discuss as to how the foot is affected and how badly the foot can be affected shall i show a few figures in the slides which are following yeah please yeah yes can i have the first slide please yes now as you rightly said we are today having 9 crore diabetics in the country the other estimates are that it could have gone to around 11 crores 10 and a half to 11 crores and when i started giving this symposium about 8 or 10 years back the same slide had 35 million that means 3.5 crores you can just imagine the alarming rate at which this diabetics is increasing you know there is a lot of competition with china at the moment and one thing where we are competing with china is the number of diabetics china has the largest number of diabetics and soon we may be overtaking china in the number of diabetics and the problem is that if there are 90 million or 9 crore diabetics it means 18 crore or 180 million feet at risk it's it's a, it's a huge huge figure who is going to cater to this feet who is going to treat all these people because it really starts a variety of problems in these people can we have the next slide this tells you as to how a foot ulcer occurs you mentioned diabetic foot now as i told you because there is sugar in the blood this same sugar tends to reach the foot now what happens is that the moment we have the next slide we have sugar in the foot as well as everywhere in the body the moment there is a wound let us say 10 bacteria or 10 germs sit on that wound this is just a notional thing which i am trying to explain those 10 in a non sugared patient or a non diabetic patient will become 20 in 2 days time 16 maybe 3 days time you know that's how they uh, they they increase the same 10 germs or 10 bacteria in a diabetic sitting on a wound are likely to increase to 5 lakhs in 2 days time there is there is literally no comparison between a patient where there is no sugar and a person in where there is sugar or a person who has diabetes it's very simple if i just take some sugar like this i drop sugar on my table within 2 hours there are going to be ants coming and getting attracted to that sugar or some substance the same thing happens in a diabetic so because of sugar 
these bacteria tend to multiply remultiply and therefore the things get infected next slide the second thing which is important in a diabetic is that blood vessels you know rakta vahinya or arteries which carry blood from the heart to the feet they start becoming narrow so if this is the caliber of an artery it progressively starts becoming narrow the same problem occurs in the heart the same problem starts occurring in the feet and because the arteries start getting narrowed there is no oxygenation of the tissues and in presence of delayed or poor oxygenation the same tissues can necrose or can start becoming gangrenous or can start becoming in colloquial words sadla sarkha hota that means the leg or the foot can start rotting this exactly is a problem in diabetic microangiopathy where the 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 feet or where the lower limbs start becoming bereft of oxygen or start having less oxygen and that is the beginning of a problem and the next slide there are some slides where i've just written so that you know i want these slides slides to stress on a person's mind the most most important we spoke of two things one is the sugar which can cause increased bacteria number two is the blood supply which can give poor oxygenation and the third thing is the most important next slide please and this is called neuropathy now you go to any diabetic any diabetic and ask him tumcha payala kay hota apke pair me kya hota hai the problem is no diabetic will say that his feet are normal a majority almost all will have some symptom or the other that some symptom could be just burning feet paya che aag hote pair me jalan hota hai altered sensation some say i feel i have become somebody great i feel i am walking on cotton i feel i am walking on clouds i feel i am walking on some gadda so these are different sensations there are some people who find pain paila mungya etat pay vartat feet are becoming heavy i i don't feel my feet are somewhere some people say that uh, when they walk the footwear is lost from the feet some people have total numbness they say nai kai sot nai there is no problem with my feet but they are numb i don't feel my feet are there but now i want all of you all all of you all to see the last line which i have written in red and that thing is which is the most dangerous in some people there are no symptoms at all or they may be symptoms which they don't understand or don't appreciate that these are symptoms as a result of which they feel that there is nothing in the feet now this is something dangerous because if i have pain i'll go to the doctor if i have some wound i'll go to the doctor but if there are no symptoms at all kuch takleef nahi hai kai stras nahi hai then many times the patient or the diabetic does not see the doctor and that is the beginning point of all problems next slide this a combination of increased sugar poor blood supply and the last thing what we said neuropathy where the feet become numb the feet cannot appreciate what the problem is this is what leads to the diabetic foot and the next slide is not to alarm you but this is the statistics in india that in the country 40000 amputations are done per year and by this i am not talking of small amputations these are major amputations and this figure i have purposely kept because it was a figure which was 4 years back now the estimate is that we are almost losing 1 lakh feet per year i have kept this figure so as to not alarm you at the same time it is in red but here we are now going to try and prevent all this we are going to avoid all this and therefore the next line is something which is little heart warming a large number of them were avoidable now this is something which you must remember they were avoidable something went wrong in the patient's perception doctor's perception treatment modalities something has gone wrong but uh, if the large number of amputations were avoidable then i think this is something which we should be aware so that we don't reach that stage where i can say that oh this could have been avoidable had the treatment taken some 6 months back or this patient had was aware that he should have reported to the doctor earlier so this is something which is extremely important yes. 
Yeah, doctor, it is really alarming to know that 40,000 feeds are amputated every year. You know, it is really alarming. Doctor, once the diabetic foot are set in, what are the effects thereafter? So, I mean, how it, how patient feel? I mean, what, what is the thing that somebody has a diabetic foot? What is the effects thereafter? Uh, Kishore sir, you have asked a very, very important question. And this is something, you know, which I think we should be stressing on the people. The first effect or the first problem is that people may not feel there is anything. That's the worst part. As I told you, there are so many people who are completely unaware that they have a diabetic foot. They are completely unaware that their foot is affected. And as I told you, there are so many people who do not know that diabetes affects the foot. People come, get a cardiogram done, get their cholesterol done, get their renal functions, kidney functions checked. But very few people get their feet checked. So the worst part is that there is nothing which is there in the beginning. And therefore, all this awareness thing comes into play. But as I told you, a person is lucky if he starts getting symptoms or something, you know, a little heaviness, which we discussed just now. And uh, 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 walking becomes a little difficult. Uh, footwear may slip out of uh, uh, the feet because there is neuropathy, you know, a person cannot hold the footwear. But I'll show a few slides, just the beginning part as to how the feet looks in a diabetic. This may not be true for all diabetics, but at least some hint as to how the feet would look. Can we have the slides, please? Uh, can you see this foot? The most important thing in this foot is it's a dry foot. Uh, you know, there, there is no vitality. Most diabetics, they may be absolutely fine, nice, well-dressed. Uh, uh, the skin texture is good. But the skin of the foot becomes dry. It is. Uh, uh, it looks like a dirty foot in spite of the patient taking utmost care of the foot. So this is a classical foot where there is drying, there is wrinkling, the nails don't appear good, the nails are big, brittle, they come off easily. Next slide, please. Over a period of time, uh, again, this is asymptomatic. This is a patient who has no taklif. This patient has no trouble at all. What has happened is, over a period of time, because of the products of sugar circulating in the blood, and as I told you, it affects every organ, the same thing happens in the foot. And in the foot, this is what is happening. The foot is supposed to be supple. A foot is a beautiful mechanism. You know, we talk of the brain, we talk of the heart. These are, of course, each, each organ is a, uh, is a legend by itself. But the foot, again, is a wonderful mechanism, and it is supposed to be supple, so that when a person walks, the person should walk with a lot of resilience. There has to be a lot of grace in walking. A diabetic's foot becomes rigid. And needless to tell you, this shape of the foot is a very clear indication that when this patient walks, there are going to be ulcers or wounds on all those prominences. And where are those prominences? Some of the prominences are on the toes over here. Some of the prominences are on this part over here. So there's going to be intense pressure when this patient walks. And therefore, this foot is very, very prone to ulcers or wounds purely because the patient's foot shape has changed. And number two, this patient is having neuropathy. He will not even realize that there is going to be an ulcer or wound just because his shape has changed and the nerves are sort of dying. The next slide, please. Over a period of time, the slide is not very clear. But if you can see the nail, these patients tend to develop a lot of fungus on the nails, as a result of which the nail becomes what is called a giant nail. Normally, you have such beautiful nails. And see this, this whole nail is brittle, the nail is thick, the patient cannot cut his nail properly. And the next slide will show you that many times the nail can just get evulsed. Now, this is one of the simplest thing which I'm showing you. So again, don't be alarmed. But all these slides are to tell you what all care to be taken, what all things you should look for in a diabetic foot. So that's how the nail has literally come off. Next slide, please. Now, over a period, what happens is, I've been telling you that these patients are neuropathic. By neuropathic, we mean that there are less sensations. And just as suppose I have my fist like this, I, I keep hitting the wall. If I do that a thousand times every day, this part is going to start hardening. 
okay it's something uh, uh, if you have a carpenter or if you have a wood cutter you find this part becomes hard each diabetic has a different pressure point and because this diabetic has a pressure point there is going to be immense pressure on this particular part in this case it is the great toe kiwa angtha paya cha the thumb of the foot and just like a corn would develop a hard part develops over there which in medical terms we call a callosity or a callus and this callus it just a hard tissue because of pressure over a period of time this can start giving a problem next slide please and what is that problem that hardness can burrow inside further if there is no respite from that callus if this patient continues to walk this patient is likely to develop something which is going further inside just looking at the photograph i need not even explain that there is something as if it's going inside it is a patient who has high sugar and because this patient has high sugar there are chances that infection germs go inside and that could be the beginning of an infection so this particular thing is the forerunner or the beginning point of a major foot infection next slide please and this is something just to show it looks like an exaggerated foot if i was to just show you without showing the toes probably you would not even identify whether this is a foot you know uh, god or nature has given us such beautiful feet where we say that there are arches of the foot so that it can take the weight of the body here this foot has just become like a ball needless to say this cannot be a walking foot it's like a punctured tire we have tires which are just something which is filled with air but imagine driving your car without air in the tires and it is exactly like this this is what we call in medical terms a charcot's foot and these feet are literally unwalkable or non walkable feet this is how a diabetic foot occurs mr masurkar yeah yeah i mean doctor there is always a fear the people when they know that that they have a diabetic foot that will it lead to amputation you know so cutting of the leg is the only the end result of all this because it develops so slowly all uh, all throughout say next 20 years of his life so that fear is always there in their mind is it so is it do you think that is the end of that uh, th this is the the fear and uh, that's why i think aptly we have named this uh, uh, symposium today diabetic foot don't worry uh, definitely not definitely not and the aim today is to preserve feet at all cost preserve feet at all cost even our clinic logo says treat diabetes and save feet because uh, cutting of a leg or an amputation is something which is a dreaded surgery not just as a part of surgery but psychologically a patient will, is just lost no one even wants to lose a finger no, no one wants to lose a toe so losing a limb is not an option today and because now there are better modalities of treatment there are better diagnostic tests and awareness programs which as i told you in the beginning the platform which you all have given me today and you all should continue giving towards saving feet we can definitely save feet as we were going to detail as our talk progresses so definitely amputation is not the end result and more than that should not be the end result of the diabetic foot then doctor what all can be done to prevent the amputation what we can do what is the how how we can prevent it uh, yeah i'll show you certain tests uh, which we are doing and uh, i think can we again run through some slides uh there is there is no substitute for examination of the feet uh each doctor is supposed to examine the feet of a diabetic thoroughly whether he is your general practitioner whether he is your diabetologist whether he is your routine regular surgeon or whether he is a diabetic foot surgeon like me so examination of feet is extremely important about which when i tell you the tips to be decided or some uh, you know care which every person is supposed to take we'll discuss in details at this moment i shall restrict myself to uh, uh, some specific tests which 
will take us through as to what all we can identify in a particular person there is a test called handheld doppler next slide please this is a simple test you know you can see the size of the instrument a small instrument which we have in the clinics we also take it for our cams and this probe when put on the patient's foot tells us about the blood supply to the foot if you remember this first three slides which i showed you that it's sugar of course which will be tested in the laboratory or on the glucometer number 2 was the blood supply that blood supply to the foot becomes less so just by touching the probe on the foot i shall be able to identify whether the blood supply is normal and good which is excellent number 2 whether it has decreased slightly or in some people the blood supply is totally cut off which is of course a very dangerous situation but this is something which is going to tell me about the blood flow to the foot a doctor who does not have this instrument also fine just like there used to be a nadi pariksha you know pulse everyone knows ki kade apan pulse bagto we see the pulse of the patient in ayurveda it used to be called nadi pariksha so that same nadi or that pulse is also felt on the foot so if the doctor just very easily feels that particular part even that is fine because it is a very very preliminary test done to see whether the patient's blood supply is good or the patient's blood supply is compromised next slide and the next slide again directly yeah this is another instrument this gives us an idea about neuropathy in this patient we said again blood supply neuropathy right uh, just just to re cap we said neuropathy means the nerves keep dying or the nerves keep getting a little weak and when the nerves keep getting a little weak what do we have to do we have to actually see how bad the nerves are next slide please so this probe is touched on the sole and vibrations are generated and we ask the person ask this patient whether vibrations can be felt can he appreciate those vibrations or he cannot appreciate those vibrations and then next slide a report is generated this slide shows a report which actually gives an objective evidence you know by this report we can make out again same whether the person has got good sensory perception that means he can appreciate or feel good on the soul or it is moderately damaged or it is severely damaged again all this is not necessary if you do not have uh, elaborate equipments it's not necessary in a clinic we can just feel and ask the person he tumhala kalta hai ka mi hat lavto hai te gudgulya kelelya kaltat ka bot halavto hai kalta hai ka you know all these small movements also will go a long way in identifying whether this patient can understand can appreciate can uh, 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 really make out whether the foot is being touched there are other simple things you know Uh, a lot of things like a monofilament nylon is available so that nylon is just touched you can't of course touch a pin because if you touch a pin and if you injure the patient that could be the beginning point of an infection but all you can do is at least touch and see whether this patient can identify or feel the sensations or not and then the next test is done next slide please next slide this is a wonderful report it's called a podia scan and what is this podia scan a person is made to stand on a particular paper that image is felt fed to the computer and this is the image which i get now this is a wonderful predictable index of what problems this patient is likely to have i'll tell you something for me which i had said earlier in one of our programs that for me this is like a horoscope you know it's like a patient's patrika but this is a photoscope for me a foot horoscope just as a jyotishi would have a look at the horoscope and then say that probably this planet is not in the right position and this planet is looking over the other planet therefore he says ki now for the next one and a half years you are not going to start any business if there is a love affair don't uh, marry now everything is going to go haywire and uh, uh, if you are going to change your house then don't do it before august you know all these things of a jyotishi or an astrologer would say after looking at the horoscope and then what does he advise he advises ki 
आपको ये जप करना पड़ेगा और यू डू दिस पेनेंस और यू रीड दिस मंत्र और वॉट एवर हिज प्रशन एंड ट्रीटमेंट आर आई ऑल्सो सुई दिस एंड फॉर मी दिस इज अरोस्कोप एंड लाइक एस्ट्रोलॉजर इवन आई प्रेडिक्ट एंड वॉट डू आई प्रेडिक्ट ओवर यूर आई कैन से विथ न्यूर सर्टनटी दैट इफ यू कंटिन्यू वॉकिंग विदाउट टेकिंग ड्यू प्रिकॉशंस कैन यू सी दट पॉइंट इन ऑरेंज एंड रेड कैन यू सी दो क्लियरली ऑन द स्क्रीन ऑन द ग्रेट टो कि अंगठ्या ऑन द थम देर आर दोज ऑरेंज पॉइंट दो रेड ये करेक्ट दो रेड पॉइंट विच आर एक्चुअली प्रेशर पॉइंट I can say with reasonable certainty, almost hundred percent, that if my patient continues walking, he is going to develop some infection or an ulcer or a wound on those orange points. And then the patient is likely to ask me, Doctor Mami, kya kare? So what am I supposed to do? And here, I have not to tell him to go to any temple. All I have to tell him is there are special footwear, there are offloading footwear. If you wear those footwear. if that particular part is offloaded that means there is no pressure on those points you will not get away from uh, uh, you will uh, not uh, get an infection or an ulcer over there so simple cares at this stage i don't have to uh, uh, operate on this particular person it is just that if i tell you offload use proper footwear then the whole thing is uh, taken care of and the patient would be fine so these are teacher sir simple test okay we do so as to keep the person safe so doctor very really nice to know that uh, now we have a horoscope to see our uh, love towards our uh, feet so yes yes absolutely it's very knowledgeable so uh, yeah i mean doctor i just want to ask you some uh, very some sort of personal question is that you have taken up this specialty which is which was ignored for a very long time you know when in our childhood i used to see here so many patients with uh, whose legs are amputated and all but we never heard somebody who specializing in this uh, area so what made you take up this uh, uh, i mean this uh, avenue i mean this line this specialty yeah sir this is a very ignored specialty still there are people when they come to our clinic they say that they did not know that there is something like diabetic foot uh when we were students uh, i passed out of jj hospital and diabetic foot used to be treated uh, just as an outcast you know uh, this would be a patient because they would come with fulminant infections uh, the infection would be severe very smelly sometime maggots kide padna mantu na kide padna actually maggots in the wound i i have many slides but i am not getting them because you know again it alarms people but uh, uh, we used to have very smelly feet they would be regaled to one corner and uh, uh, at the end of it they would land up with an amputation go home and uh, there was no follow up then something like jaipur foot came which was a very very uh, primitive type of a foot but at least that changed the life of many people it changed the concept towards diabetic foot so frankly as a student i used to wonder but really never gave a thought to uh, to something called diabetic foot because that was not a part of the curriculum something interesting i'll tell you when liver transplant started in mumbai a few years back at that time when i think there were four liver transplants done uh, i uh, think mumbai or maharashtra just four liver transplants done there were 10 qualified liver transplant surgeons in the city qualified people total number transplants done four qualified number 10 that is what because these were all interesting things you know something which was got be very glamorous liver transplant and diabetics we are talking of 18 crore diabetics 10 crore diabetics 18 crore feet and believe me dedicated diabetic foot surgeons even today in the city of mumbai are less than 10 I, I keep telling my juniors, you know, you have to take up diabetic foot because that awareness has to spread. People have to go reach out to people because otherwise people are going to land up with problems and amputations. But the journey started when I joined Raheja Hospital. Raheja Hospital is a prime diabetic center in Mumbai, and there I met my mentor, Dr. Bar. A lot of people who have had diabetic foot also must be knowing his name. Dr. Bar has been doing all this work for the last 30 to 35 years. in diabetes that when even that concept of diabetic foot was not there and then 
that interest started growing that diabetic foot is not just about cutting feet but it is more about saving feet the question which you asked and i said it was a very important question that do all diabetic foot ultimately uh, end up with an amputation no our idea is that we have to save feet and then that interest started growing as to how we can save feet and saving feet just did not mean antibiotics operations prosthesis artificial legs it also meant counseling patient it also mean awareness program and a combination of all this working with a lot of other specialties the bone doctors the orthopedic surgeon the vascular people the people who restore blood supply we could really achieve astounding results so as to prevent amputations and that is how the journey from a general surgeon started going into diabetic foot and then once you go deep into something it starts becoming a passion you know now more than practice it becomes a happiness when somebody's foot is saved that gratitude in a person's eyes because uh, amputating or cutting a foot or cutting a leg is a very very sensitive thing it shatters the family shatters the family so therefore the journey which started from a patient in the veranda to now patients who can literally go back happy in a large cases of course there are some cases where in spite of all efforts we cannot salvage i am not saying that you know there is magic cure with any surgeon but at least the concept to try and save a foot is something extremely important it is it is really remarkable doctor we really admire you doctor many of our viewers want to know what is exactly meant by foot care what one has to do what is foot care i yeah uh, foot care essentially means uh, uh, taking care of the foot and what is meant by uh, taking care of the foot uh, it, there, there is some slide uh, can you show me the next slide if that is so we will take that slide right now yeah wonderful sir correct this is the slide i, I was not sure whether it is in sequence now uh, this is something which uh, uh, is something which i want all viewers to literally copy this down or learn this in today's take home message if there is any one thing i want everyone to know these seven things and uh, sir i hope we have some time that we can dwell with each of these yes yeah, right. now what is foot care is that there are simple tips now if you read all of these look very innocuous they say mere kai le le this is this is something which we have been doing for years but people are not doing it for years so i'll talk about each one in details the first thing is see your feet daily why see your feet daily because a diabetic foot is a neuropathic foot i told you kai kalat nahi payala people do not know what's happening in the foot so either the patient himself sees his foot daily or there is somebody in the house who is supposed to see his foot daily and what is to be seen first see the dors the sole of the foot कुठे काही जखम आहे का इफ देर इज एनी बोंड ओवर देर इफ देर इज एनी रेडनेस इफ देर इज एनी मेनी टाइम्स यू नो वी हैव सीन पीपल हु हैव कम विथ अ नेल फ्रॉम द फुटवेअर इन टू द इन टू द इन टू द फुट कॉजिंग एन अल्सर सो यू हैव टू सी वेदर देर इज एनी स्मॉल बोंड फॉर पीपल हु आर नॉट अकस्टम टू दिस एंड डायबिटिक फुट वुड ऑलमोस्ट फील दैट आई एम टॉकिंग वेग इफ देर इज सम इन्फेक्शन वुडंट आई फील इट नो यू वुडंट फील इट i'll give you a nice example not nice actually it's a bad example there was a patient who came to me and you know the history given by the relatives they said ki kal pasna gharat vas yet hota there was some smell at home and they thought probably some something rotting or some rat is dead or some gutter is open that type of smell they did not realize where the smell is coming from and then somebody noticed blotches on the floor blotches blood stain blotches on the floor and then they saw ki there was kakancha payala there was a big wound over there with pus draining out which was foul smelling this particular patient was absolutely blissfully unaware that there was pus coming from his own feet it was only when there was smell in the house i am trying to say that with so much infection the person was not even aware that there was an abscess or something in the foot so much neuropathy or so much of lack of sensations could be in the person's feet and therefore and this is not an exaggeration those who have suffered from diabetic foot or i think a lot of my patients are also viewers today 
they would appreciate this idea or understand that this is exactly what happens and therefore you are supposed to see your feet another thing which you are supposed to see is open up your toes and see in between the toes you know diabetics have what is called crowding of toes the toes are not separate they are crowded as a result of which atmade moisture rata there is moisture and as a result of moisture there is fungal infection and because of fungal infection there can be an infection in the entire foot so see your foot number 1 number 2 trim your nails carefully everyone trims his nail carefully but that is why i made a point to show you <coughs> that how the nails become hard and brittle once the nails become hard and brittle it is extremely difficult to cut your nails i'll tell you something interesting about this nail cutting as we go on further sir and also had a very funny thing there was a person from his native place had a very hard nail could not cut it whatsoever because the nail started growing immensely he ultimately asked one of his nephews to use a sickle vira asto na koiti sarka koiti that vira or sickle to cut his nail and uh, perhaps that fellow must have uh, thought himself as the hero of the titanic in titanic there is a shot where uh, leo cuts the handcuffs uh, no that lady cuts the handcuffs of leo so he must have thought that he would also be as good as that and he kept this patient's nail or the thumb on a stone used the sickle and in the process chopped off the part of the toe the patient was brought in a badly infected state again this things like a made up story exaggerated story but believe me these things happen in a diabetic foot because the nails just cannot be cut absolutely sad absolutely horrible this was not necessary so as i uh, you know that in the red we had written that 1 lakh amputation the 40000 amputation many of them avoidable now this is the avoidable thing there was no necessity of cutting the nail with a sickle but people do it wear cotton socks cotton socks are important to protect your feet and protect your feet even from shoes because the next thing is use proper footwear people say maine 12000 rupees ka shoes laya hai i have got the best shoes these are having absolute beautiful insoles no the best shoes are the ones which are purchased in the evening i want each of this point to be understood proper footwear means the best of shoes are not proper footwear footwear should be purchased in the evening where the foot of every person is at least mildly swollen you wear that footwear wear that footwear wear those shoes and once you wear the shoes if you find that the size is correct just ask for one size more because in a diabetic footwear the footwear should not be tight the footwear cannot be tight it has to be a loose footwear where your toes can move inside the footwear so that is correct footwear buy footwear in the evening whatever is your comfort size ask for one size more and that is the perfect footwear the next is never walk barefoot that was the one before that and this is something again sir which we have had the problem that today we cannot enter our temples with footwear there are so many patients who have come to us you know it is something like a tour which goes maybe to rajasthan uh, uh, where there is all marble and people are asked to quickly have a look inside and come if it is afternoon time people walk barefoot and after people walk barefoot they have come with extreme blisters and those blisters are only because this was a patient who was neuropathic this was a patient who could not understand how much temperature was there on the floor and therefore these are burns which are caused because of footwear so never walk barefoot even at home we recommend that socks and floaters type of thing should be used and the last two things which are important over here is that every person likes a foot massage but more so in diabetics because they have heavy feet every diabetic would like someone pai dabun de zara pai la massage karun de hot fermentation and massages have caused a lot of problems so we recommend to diabetics that if at all pai halu dabun ga that means you can gently get your feet pressed but vigorous massage has caused a lot of bleeding inside because the veins are very fragile and this can be a beginning of a very very major problem and therefore we tell patients that uh, uh, you have to take complete care 
and follow these simple tips so sir when you asked about foot care yeah. this foot care is extremely important where every each and every point of this is to be very very meticulously and religiously followed yeah doctor there se- there seems to be a new concept because we have been hearing there is diabetic pedicures what is diabetic pedicure uh this started from uh, uh, i i mentioned to you sir you know that i'm going to tell you something interesting when it came to nail cutting uh this is a practical problem that diabetics cannot cut their nails a lot of diabetics have very hard nails so what they do is they either end up uh, cutting their nails at home uh, which is a very badly cut nail badly means of course there is no alternative they really cannot help it or they have very huge growth nails which become a source of infection atmade kachra rahto and something can go wrong so uh, as a rule uh, we used to cut their nails or sometimes a patient would request doctor what do i do you know very very sheepishly doctor what do i do these nails cannot be cut uh, and uh, can you help us and we have those big cutters they are almost like bone cutters which we used to cut the nails now that started becoming so often it was a lot of drain of time because then i used to spend a lot of time cutting nails of people as one of uh, it, it was something which was necessary i couldn't tell the patient no i'm not going to cut your nails because he would land up with a problem that is the time when we thought and even the patient started feeling awkward asking me every time doctor can you please cut the nails so that was the time when we thought ki we will have a regular pedicure we are not doing anything great absolutely it's, it's like just cutting nails filing cleaning the foot but it has helped us in two ways one is that the patient does not feel awkward that he is asking a surgeon to cut nails so we have a person who is trained who keeps cutting nails we use that time to clean the foot in between the toes which i told you know that in between there can be web space infections and that is the time when the the trained pedicurist actually counsels the patient because it's almost like a half an hour procedure that time is well spent in counseling the pedicurist will tell he baga hi kaiji gechi see this is the point where you are supposed to see if it's red see if it's an ulcer then maybe he'll show we have flow charts and you know the slip charts so we can show them see this is how it looks if it becomes red like this you have to contact your doctor immediately if you are outside if you have gone to your native place if you get this type of thing stop walking so it served us in two ways people could walk in and get their nails and feet clean and believe me diabetics have dirty feet by dirty feet i am not derogating the thing because of neuropathy because of crowding because of shape you know it's literally difficult to clean each and every corner it's like cleaning your house going to every nook and corner with a vacuum cleaner and cleaning so when we started doing this we could actually clean people's feet we could moisturize their feet we tell them how to do it themselves and what to look for so the dual benefit was it was like actually what i'm showing you as just one webinar seven tips every time the patient comes for a, 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 a pedicure the pedicurist will ask the person okay fine you repeat the tips which i told you know in a little friendly way so that the person also gets in his mind that these tips are not to be taken lightly these are something which a person has to take care properly yeah doctor we have some viewers you know they have i mean they are diabetics but they don't have a diabetic foot so could you please tell them what are the measures they have to take to prevent diabetic foot only one thing keep your sugars under control keep walking keep exercising and once you are doing all this it is likely that your foot problems may not go away but they may get prolonged statistics show that uh, once i have diabetes today in 2020 by 2027 i am likely to develop foot problems because neuropathy the main culprit usually takes about 7 to 8 years to set in so the more i keep my sugars under control the better are the chances that uh, uh, that neuropathy is prolonged because the neuropathy is prolonged there are better chances that i don't develop diabetic foot tobacco and smoking is a bad uh, thing for the foot because the blood supply grossly diminishes with tobacco intake because of nicotine so if there is a smoker or if a tobacco chewer the smoking or tobacco chewing should be stopped today today it's not even tomorrow or people say nahi me hal hal try karto you know by by 15th august i'll be free from it no it has to be stopped today because every 
every smoke every pinch of tobacco is going to create problems so a healthy lifestyle is important to keep sugars under control walking is good to keep your circulation good but it will only prolong right from day 1 you have to presume that i am going to have diabetic foot that does not mean keeping worrying but you have to understand so that you don't have to worry in future and it is important that you start seeing the feet right from day 1 that means if i am diagnosed diabetic today i need not be obsessed and keep seeing the foot morning evening from tomorrow but then at least once in two weeks once in three weeks you see the foot have a basic idea about the seven things which we had uh, given you know as simple tips yeah doctor we know that there are special diabetic footwear can you please uh, elaborate on them uh yeah unfortunately i couldn't get slides of those diabetic footwear i, I think it's my fault i should have because you know uh, on your web page we can show those photographs later uh diabetic footwear again is uh, nothing uh, specialized but it makes a world of difference to diabetics uh i'll first tell you what footwear is to be avoided all chappals are to be literally thrown away for a diabetic there is no role for chappals in a diabetic all diabetics have to wear sandals sandals means there has to be that patta or what we call a counter behind so there has to be something which should be supporting from behind because people with a lot of neuropathy will you know eventually tell you that slippers tend to slip out there are so many people who do not realize where the slipper has even fallen off so there has to be that patta behind number 1 number 2 most of the chappals or sandals have that strap in between the two toes between the angtha and the next toe between the great toe and the next toe so that has to be not there in a diabetic footwear so these two things are important in avoiding this type of footwear so something without a strap is wrong something with that uh, uh, with that strap inside is wrong this is what is wrong footwear now the right footwear has an insole insole is that part inside of microcellular rubber or mcr it is like a shock absorber just like a shock absorber in a car these are shock absorbing things so when a person walks that full 80 70 90 kilos whatever is the patient's weight is not exerted directly on the foot so this is the rubber which is used and then there are highly specialized insoles called ethyl vinyl acetate eva or things like that which uh, which uh, you know again effectively absorb, absorb shocks for patients or operated there are very huge shoes because operated patients really need something where the uh, where the amount of pressure is taken care of now those footwear do not look good they are heavy the compliance is poor when we tell a patient he has to wear he says doctor fine kai zala tari talel but i am not going to wear the footwear and we take a lot of time or our counselor sits with the patient just to explain why he or she is supposed to wear that because if he or she does not wear those diabetic footwear when the foot is affected the problem is only going to compound so therefore it is extremely important to have right footwear though they may not look good they may be heavy but to begin with even plain sandals floaters you know with those two pattas and one strap behind plain sandals what in colloquial terms we call floaters with thick good cotton socks would suffice in the initial stages So, doctor, do you? Uh, I mean, we want to have some message from you for the general population regarding uh, diabetic foot. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, again, coming to thanking you all for giving me this opportunity today. Next slide. We'll show it in slide so it strikes the mind of people. So today, uh, Kishore sir, we have to take a promise from all our viewers, all our viewers today. And that promise is a simple promise. Today, when you go back home. today when you go back home think of five people either at your home your relatives your office your society your friends you will at least get five people whom you know who are diabetics it will take you 10 seconds to think of five diabetics diabetes is so common uh, you you just have to think who are my contacts who are diabetics so the next slide each one tell one so today all the viewers have to go back i have told you think of five diabetics at least take one of them call him today and what are you going to tell them you are not going to tell them everything which i told you but i have told you to copy down one slide and those seven tips 
the seven simple tips of foot care if you tell today one person and if out of that one person whom everyone has told if we can avoid an amputation i think the 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 function of this webinar or the purpose of this webinar will be served so today if we have a thousand viewers there'll be 2000 people who will know those seven things even if they don't understand what is microangiopathy what is neuropathy what is vasculopathy even if they know that there is something like seven simple cares to be taken for a foot then i think we have achieved a lot so the only message is go back and tell one and of course those who are diabetics have to take care of themselves and their feet so this is the only message sir which i would like to give doctor you are doing lot of activity in the rural areas of maharashtra and i am grateful to you that you have uh, you have agreed to help us in our rotary club of sea coast to do some project on uh, the on, on diabetic foot in the rural areas can you just tell us ki what exactly work you are doing in that area yeah uh, there is an alarming thing which is found in one research done in chennai they have found that the rate of rise of diabetics rate of rise of diabetics in rural india is same as the rate of di- rise of diabetics in urban areas now this is little frightening earlier we used to say you know that uh, <coughs> diabetes is essentially an urban disease it's an affluent disease a rich man having junk food in urban areas is likely to have diabetes till then at least it was okay now we are finding simple people in rural areas who will eat bhakri chutney and bhaji also have start have started having diabetes and this rise of diabetes is extremely bad because it affects people who are uh, who, know, who who really cannot manage their lifestyles and therefore uh, uh, again this would be an opportunity to do more and more camps more and more awareness programs i'll just run through a few slides where we have done camps because there is something which i want to stress on in those camps as well can we have a look at those slides we have done camps for the bombay police large number of policemen with diabetic feet large number you know when you actually interact with them and uh, do camps with them we realize that in spite of whatever we feel or whatever we uh, we say sometimes uh, they really have a tough life there is no time for eating at the right time uh, no time to take care of their feet they are diabetics they uh, you know li- life is without a schedule lot of them have been suffering the next slide next slide we could rush through them see this was in our native place of aronda i have just taken this picture from the back just to show the rapt attention with with these simple people simple people are listening you know even they would like to know what the thing is but people have not been able to reach out to them they may not understand the whole concept and then when we talk to them we don't go into all these details of uh, what is neuropathy and all but we just tell them simple things as to how they take care of diabetes how they can take care of their feet but this is extremely important because god forbid one of this person has to have a diabetic foot or any diabetic related complication they hardly have access to good medical facilities the next slide and this is what i wanted to show you all when we are gone to bangalore this was a who assisted activity where that uh, bhagwan mahavir jain hospital has procured this big van and through this van they go to multiple places multiple villages every sunday this is all their dedicated team which goes every sunday they go they literally catch people test their sugars and uh, uh, kishor sir are we exceeding time uh, or yeah no it's okay we can go ahead because uh... I think okay. you will find it very interesting because so many questions have come. We'll take two, three questions and then we'll wind. Yeah. All right. I'll be a little brief, but I wanted to stress on yeah. this point because you know we we joined them on one of the camps and uh, they they literally take care of the uh, local village pujari, the sanch sarpanch, uh, social workers, and they literally get people get their foot feet tested. Next slide. And they have that what we are doing here in elaborate clinics. to a simple extent they are doing it in their van they are doing this foot testing in the van where they actually test feet of people they counsel them those who are diabetics they tell them come to the center maybe next time we'll take you to the center in the van such good activity they have been able to literally what i'm saying catch diabetics 
because the earlier you catch them because the problem is our countries we do not know so many people who are diabetics but just because they have not done a simple test that uh, 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 they don't know that they are diabetics so catching hold of diabetics yeah. and then ultimately taking them to a center and see that they are treated and then see that they are counseled is goes a long way so again with social organizations which all are doing an excellent work i think it is our duty as the medical fraternity to join in that endeavor and it's Thank your duty to reach out to such a large population yeah yeah, yeah. i mean doctor with your permission can i take some two three questions which i which i received from the audience yes yes of course uh, we have one question from uh, mr uh, mr prabha mr prabhakar dekate that he said he is 63 year old he is a diabetic patient for 20 years and he gets itching in area of knee and ankle due to diabetes what medication and care should i take yeah uh, mr dekate this is a part of neuropathy same neuropathy as i told you you know you will get every symptom either from aches and pains to itching to burning uh, itching in medical terms is a spectrum of pain sensation so itching is on the lowest side severe pain is on the other side so the two things which are important is that of course your sugars have to be controlled there is no compromise on that and then there is a vitamin called uh, vitamin b12 which is methylcobalamin a lot of people will be knowing about this vitamin b12 a single capsule a day can be used uh, i am not prescribing but i can safely tell this because it's a safe vitamin the only thing is there are some people who take this vitamin for years on end and sometimes when we do their blood test for this vitamin this vitamin o says it's it's a very high level of vitamin so you can start taking this vitamin and then get your sugar the uh, levels for vitamin b12 tested but remember the name vitamin b12 if you take b12 it's likely that this thing will go off at the same time when we said ki your feet are dry most of the diabetics will have dry feet so moisturize your feet anything your ponds any cold cream vaseline would be fine we don't recommend coconut oil though it's the simplest and the best thing but, but coconut oil sometimes attracts cockroaches and rats and we have seen a lot of people who have had rats and cockroaches at home coming and biting after applying coconut oil so either vaseline or any other cold cream should be fine yeah doctor there is a uh, one question from our rutinian ashok mehra how to deal with spongy feeling in the sole of your feet foot spongy feeling it actually answers our question when we said ki every diabetic is going to have uh, you know these symptoms yeah. of neuropathy so this is again a neuropathy uh, we have to do that test biothesiometry which we showed to identify whether it is mild moderate or severe but the bottom line of treatment is going to be again control of diabetes this vitamin b12 and if you have started developing mr mehra spongy feeling then it's likely that the nerves over there are starting to become numb or starting to become weak so the safest thing more than treatment is you have to be wearing cotton socks and those sandals or a diabetic footwear so that at least you don't trip or fall or injure your feet and again spongy feeling means there is neuropathy which has set in significantly so you have to just watch your feet watch every day so that there is no damage further doctor there is one interesting question from uh, geeta amladi doctor is there anything called foot angiography or foot angioplasty very much very much wonderful you know a diabetic foot actually uh, masurkar sir i think we should have a week of uh, a week yeah, for uh, there are diabetic so foot yeah <laughs> because uh, again this is a very uh, important question she has asked but we couldn't touch her because it's related to Uh, surgeries now we mentioned something called microangiopathy or angiopathy where i you know i showed it something like this that if this is the caliber of the blood vessel the blood vessel starts decreasing in size so if the blood supply to the foot is low or decreased then what is done is an angiography of the foot and the leg is done and if they find in angiography that there is a constriction then an angioplasty is done to increase the size of that blood vessel so just as we have heard if i get a heart attack i go to the cardiologist he does an angiography he finds out which of my blood vessels are narrowed and then he does an angioplasty for me exactly like the heart this is done in the foot and the leg but 
only a word of caution over here if i get a heart attack and an angiography is done for me and an angioplasty is done for me that effect may be a lasting effect it may be 2 5 10 years or lifetime that i am fine the foot being farthest away from the heart the arteries being long arteries and the damage being significant angioplasty in the foot has got a very limited life span that means if an angioplasty is done now it maybe holds good for maybe uh, just about 2 months or 3 months so it is restricted only if a surgery is contemplated if there is gangrene if there is a problem only then it is done not as a routine yeah thank you doctor in fact there are so many questions we will take last one or two questions before we uh, wind up the session there is ravi mandrekar ask which i see many people are asking ki why tingling feeling in toes only happens during night time while going to bed uh, i uh, <laughs> i'm caught on the wrong foot i really do not have an answer to this and this question has been asked to me by my patients also but but many times many times it is felt that uh, now th- this is just a conjecture and this is what i have discussed with other diabetologists also that uh, during day time there is a lot of activity and when there is a lot of activity your mind naturally gets diverted away from these feelings at night when there is complete rest complete silence there is usually a concentration on uh, uh, that part which is aching or the part which is giving rise to tingling and that probably is an explanation this is what i give to my patients also but because again in literature there has been no explanation to this but whereas the question is very very pertinent lot of my own patients have been asking me so thank you doctor thank you so much and uh, there are so many questions but i request all the viewers that please uh, mail to us at our uh, asco mails and we will definitely take it to doctor and who we will uh, definitely uh, give you the uh, I mean, answers for the same thank you doctor thank you so much and uh, now i request uh, our subhash saraf our vice president subhash saraf to sir be- before that can i just show one last slide and yep. uh, Please, yeah. There is only one slide which is pending, please. and I think that is uh, because it's a little significant over here. Yeah, I'll just take a minute. Yeah, the slide after this. Yeah, uh, uh, I wanted to end on this note. I wanted to end on this note, and uh, it is pertinent to our topic also today. Diabetic foot, don't worry. Uh, this is the famous photograph of Lord Krishna taking care of somebody's feet. we had taken care of sudama's feet and therefore i always feel we are as diabetic foot surgeons as a specialty and every person who is a diabetic or in the family of diabetic what i am trying to stress on this is just have a look at the foot so that you don't miss something which will become catastrophic and which will turn to gangrene and if you do this if you do this exactly what the lord is doing in this particular slide then we could be rest assured that nothing will go wrong even simple small care of the feet will go a long way in preventing diabetic gangrene and therefore though it's a huge catastrophic topic we have named this topic diabetic foot don't worry because with proper care with proper awareness you will be able to save amputation and you will be able to save life Thank you. Sorry, I intruded with this no, slide, no, but we have to pass you. on this message. No, no, no. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, friends. It was a wonderful explanation given by Dr. Tushar Rege on behalf of All India Saraswati Cultural Organisation. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Tushar Rege for the excellent presentation given to us, and you know. He made us aware the importance of taking care of our foot. Diabetes is perennial; means it goes. We knew that diabetes is there, but we never knew the importance of diabetic foot. He took us to all the nuances in a very lucid manner. Doctor, thank you very much for that. I really admire your social work. What you are doing. at uh, rural places and we assure you whatever support you want from us even from the rotaries we are there to support you the seven steps what you have given us doctor i think that will 
take us a long, long way and we, it will help us to take care of our feet. At the same time, the hint or the alarm to the smokers, what you have given, I think uh, that is really the diabetes people who are smoking, please stop it today. I have done it so I can with uh, Wayman say that, yes, we can stop smoking. At the same time, we take this opportunity to thank uh, the Rotary Club of Bombay Seacoast for associating with us for this webinar. At the same time, our managing committee members who have supported this and it was possible because of their support to have this webinar. At the same time, the technical team, technical support team, Major Paresh Roshi, Rahul Sakalkar, Mohit Bhende and Ashutosh Narkani, without them, this wouldn't have been possible and got a lot. Last but not the least, to all our viewers, because we are trying our best to have this knowledge series and I hope this is definitely one of the a very important topic what we have touched today and a thank you for your support in large numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you.